uh, basically a, an elementary view of what the rate change will do and why it's needed. So the consumers can look at that. So the consumers can take into consideration what is, what is happening with their rates or why those rate changes are, are being introduced. But only those rates above 10% will be publicized and that is to fit with federal law. They only say that 10% is required, you have to publish rate increases of 10% and that's what, that's all the department wanted to do, just maintain federal law so that it wouldn't be as um, taxing on health insurance issuers uh, as it could be if everything was, it had to be publicized. Now the 105 days is, is an important concept because partially because of the, the public input, uh, but also because the department has to take a, to take a meaningful review. 105 days does not have to be, the department could come up with a uh, decision before um, within that period, but uh, just to break it down so you'll know how we got there, uh, the department will have 60 days to review a rate. If it gets filed 105 days before implementation, the department will have 60 days to review it. Within that period, the department will have to submit for public comment the preliminary justifications. We'll have to give the public 30 days to make comment, to opine on the proposed health and rate, uh, the rate increases. And for the department to then consider those opinions, to consider those uh, reactions to health rate increases by the consumers. So the, consumer, the department would have 15 days to publish the rates. The consumers would have 30 days to consider those and make comment. The department would then have 15 additional days to analyze those comments, make a decision, and get back with the health insurance issuers and say, hey, your rate is approved, or your rate is not approved for these reasons. After 60 days, the, the health insurance issuers will know whether a rate has been approved or not. If a rate has been approved, the health insurance issuers are required under current law to provide the consumers within, uh, with at least 45 days notice. So if the department has 60 days and the consumers require under law 45 days notice of any rate change, that adds up to 105 days. We'll try to make that as quick as possible uh, to allow for the quick implementation of rates. All rates that are submitted to the department will be reviewed for reasonableness and compliance with existing rating laws. That's it. I mean, that's, that's all they're going to be reviewed by. Those three standards, excessive, unjustified, unfairly discriminatory, and with existing law. Now, while the public can comment on those, the public cannot change the standards by which a rate is reviewed. The public can't say, yeah, but, I just don't feel good about this, I can't afford this rate increase, or whatever, you can't do that anymore. The, the standards are what they are, and they're across the board, they're in Louisiana, they're every other state. Health insurance issuers all have to meet that unreasonable test. And again, that's a low bar to reach. Any rate that is found unreasonable will not be approved. It's as, it's as simple as that. If you, if you can't meet that minimum standard of a reasonable rate, of justifying a rate with uh, sound actuarial decision making to ensure that you're not, the uh, health insurance issuers are not um, discriminating unfairly against, uh, against any policyholders, then they will be found unreasonable and will be disapproved. Again, you'll be notified uh, within 60 days. Finally, rates not implemented within 90 days will be void. And other aspects of uh, health insurance or, or, or insurance uh, regulation, stacking occurs. What, what we will try to do is to avoid that and to just say, if you're going to submit a rate, use it. If you don't, it'll be void. It's as simple as that. Rate review regulation is not a hard concept to, to, um, to introduce. Now, the federal law under rate review doesn't necessarily tackle um, existing rating regulation, uh, especially with respect to the rating factors. Now the state has community rating, as you all are probably well aware, and that affects small and individual group markets. Those factors allow for rating bans, about 
uh, from the index rate to be used, and that's all. However, it, it, the department needs, if the department's going to review rates for reasonableness, it also needs to review them to make sure that they're compliant with existing law. The law's on the books, and they, they've been there for years, and they apparently mean something. So if a review is going to take place, the review needs to also make sure that the rates are compliant with existing law. However, PPAC amends that, will preempt the existing law in 2014 and change the rating factors that are used. Essentially, health status goes away, and once you take out health status, you would really have to completely and entirely revamp the community rating system to comply with the new federal rating factors which are in Section 2701 of the Public Health Service Act. The new rating factors include age up to 3.1, 3 to 1 ratio, individual versus family, geographic area, Louisiana only has one geographic area at the time, uh, at this time, and tobacco usage. Because federal law does not introduce those rating factors until 2014, the state is decided, the department decided that it's best to continue using the system that they've got. Community rating should stay, but in 2014, community rating will sunset. And the bill introduces that sunset provision to take away community rating and introduce those federal factors that I just mentioned. Then everybody, regardless of what state health insurance issuers operate in, they're going to have to follow the federal factors anyway. So this is not you know, a, a state mandate by any, by any means. We also introduced some uh, language to allow enforcement to allow the department to uh, make sure that health insurance issuers are in compliance with the rating uh, standards, um, cease and desist orders, things like that for uncompliant uh, health insurance issuers operating in the state. Um, and we also moved around some of the existing uh, statutes that have to do with unfairly discrimin uh, discrimination against severely disabled or uh, patients with sickle cell, things like that. We moved some of those um, statutes around. We, we moved some of the, the uh, informational filing and maintenance of records requirements that are on the books now. Um, but those were largely left unchanged. So as, as little disruption as possible went into this. With the introduction of the rate review legislation, if passed, this will allow Louisiana to have a compliant or an effective rate review program. It is one of the last states in the country now not to have such a program. It's, it's, it may be the last state now not to have an effective rate review program. It is a little bit behind uh, on implementation of the federal mandates that have been around since 2010. So. The introduction of this bill will, allow, will put the state in compliance. It will allow the department to regulate rates rather than have HHS regulate rates. It's a simple, it's a simple concept. The reasons behind the, the, uh, the bill are clear. Uh, they're not difficult to grasp. And the department used sound judgment and talked to as many, um, as many stakeholders as possible in introducing this legislation. At that, I'll take any questions if you have them. I'll be around for a while. I've, I've talked to uh, a lot in the 